Look, you're lucky you switch your hours from four to six. If you were still doing mornings. <sighs> yeah, right. I don't know how I used to do that because I did fucking hang out and go out drinking and shit. But I would uh, I would go home after the show and go to sleep. And then I'd just kind of stay up all night. And then uh, maybe a nap between 4 a.m. and 5 and then go to the show and do the show. It, morning radio, as, as everyone knows, is the shittiest lifestyle you can have. It's the most money, but the shittiest lifestyle. Right. You're, you're, you're getting paid the most. It's the, the flagship show, usually, of whatever station you're on. I feel like I have like, something on my nose, and I swear it's not Coke. Uh, so, but I, I was always constantly fucking tired. Uh, you, you can't really hang out at the normal time everybody else is. You're awake when everyone's asleep and vice versa. So, uh, yeah, everybody that does morning radio knows that. And once you get out of it, you're just like, thank God I did my stint. Yeah, and then the weekend, you know, if you stay up late Friday, oh, then yeah. you stay up late Saturday, then you try to go, force yourself to go to sleep early on Sunday, and you can, so you toss and turn it all Sunday night because yep. you stayed up late those other two days. So yeah. Monday morning, you're on four hours of sleep, and you're miserable. Right. You're fucked on Monday, regardless of what you do. Maybe by Tuesday morning, you start feeling okay. Yeah. Settle back into it, and then it just starts all over again. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it was fun and all. That's the only thing. The only reason I could think of getting up that fucking early. I had a show. I had a, a when I got out of college, I had a morning show in Jersey on this little stage. It was only like 100 watts. I was on from 6 to 10, Monday through Friday. It paid me $100 a week. Right. I had to go to bed. I was like fucking 23. I had to go to bed at like 9 o'clock every night. <laughs> Miserable. I got That's up at, like party time. Yeah. Like you fucking, you're in college. Yeah, I went to one concert one time and I was miserable because I knew it wasn't going to end till 11. I'm like, I'm yeah. going to fuck up my sleep. I did it for like six months. I hated it. I'm like, Constantly this sucks. You watch, you know? Yeah. Oh, you're out to dinner and you're like, ah, uh, got to get home. I can't do this. I can't. Yeah, fuck that. So I'm like, when I invented this place, <laughs> I'm like, fuck it. I, Monday through Thursday. 4 p.m. sounds like a time I can make it to work. Now it, it's great because it doesn't even matter if a show's on in the morning or the afternoon. Oh, you listen no. to it whenever you want. People watch, will watch it whenever, whenever you want. Yeah. You know, people, uh, the, the, the good thing about this is we, we all do a live show at first, which is cool. You know, I like having uh, the live element and people being able to, to take phone calls from people and shit like that. Uh, but anybody wants to watch it any time. It's not like, oh, shit, I didn't catch it live. I can't see it. No, they'll fucking watch it yeah. later, whatever. That's, um, yeah, podcasting kind of changed all that. Uh, there are some people that still adhere to these weird radio uh, habits, I guess, uh, that just have nothing to do yeah. with, with podcasting. <clears throat> you don't have to tease anything, really. You don't, you don't have to have tease to... anything. A podcast could be 38 minutes or an hour and 46. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't have to be this exact thing. You don't have to recap the audience of where, like, what's happening. I remember that was a whole big thing, like... Uh, Top of the hour, okay, it's 9 a.m., and you'd be like, uh, yeah, well, uh, if you just tuned in, we were talking to this about this and that, you know, reset the table, as they say. Yeah. No, you'd rewind it. Let me hear what happened. I'll just rewind yeah. the fucking thing. Yeah, yeah, radio is. That's uh, why I hated it, because I was like, it was like, you know, whatever. It was almost like a light FM station, so I had to play like Phil Collins oh, solo shit, shit which is yeah. horrific. And then, you know, at 15 minutes, you got like a minute to go to the weather, the time. Yeah. And, you know, maybe something else or whatever. And then back talk the song or whatever like that. But you had it maybe 45 seconds every yeah. 15 minutes. I'm like this. I try to throw a joke in there. The program director's like, you can't make any jokes. I go, why? Like, what the <laughs> fuck am I doing this for? I don't want to play Susu Studio. Yeah. Fucking song sucks. That's what, uh, I guess Howard Stern could be blamed for so many people that wanted to talk on the radio because you know you grow up you, you listen to howard and you go fuck that looks like an awesome job yeah and then you get a job in radio and this douchebag's telling you to play su studio yeah su -su studio <laughs> and you're like what the fuck man i just i want to talk i got some shit to say it's like no no you don't do that i remember i snuck in aerosmith dream on because i figured it's a slow song yeah you know and I'm like you can't play called like on the phone. you can't play that he was listening to the car i go why yeah, why not go, I go, it doesn't fit the format I go, it's a fucking slow song. Everybody knows Aerosmith Dream On. Yeah. 
He's like, you cannot just play your own songs. I'm like, no, this because blows. they have to justify the program director has right. to justify. You know, he he writes out the list. So if you could just play anything, what does that mean? His job is <laughs> fucking yeah. useless. Yeah. Meanwhile, everyone listeners are like, holy shit, Aerosmith. Yeah, yeah. Right, oh, finally. Well, I haven't heard this one in a while on this station. Or yeah, good enough to hear fucking open arms. Yeah, you know, yeah. in between <laughs> Sue Sue Studio. <laughs> Some solo Steve Perry. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, Sherry. Sherry. Yeah. <laughs> that was Oh, Sherry. Oh, my God. Yeah. The, the good old days. No. And, and it's and that's, that made me do comedy because I was like, I got to get out of this. I go, yeah, that's what yeah. I wanted to do. Yep. And I said, I got because I was already starting to write jokes. I go, I got to get up on stage and do this. I don't want to listen to fucking anyone. <laughs> and then when I got up there, I go, this is, I'm, I'm going to be my own boss the rest of my life. Yeah. And look. Do fucking your own great. Fucking boss. The rest my of own your boss. Life. I do what I, I tell my kid all the time. I go. I do whatever I want when I want. That's the. That's what you need to do. You got to find a job. We don't have to fucking yeah. listen. Maybe you got to listen to somebody the first ten or fifteen years. Yep. And when you work, but after that, fucking don't listen to anybody. You got to play the long right game. Up, yeah. Get in there. Yeah, yeah. While you're working on your shit, you have to work for someone. Yeah, and you got to do it. You got to take the bullet, meet him. I go, it's like right. a relationship. It's like a, it's like having a cunt girlfriend. Right. You know what I mean? But she's got, she got a good, nice place to live yeah. and you got no other options. <laughs> so you just stay yeah. with her. But you know, eventually I'm, I'm going to make a move at some point. And I was, I was never good at what I was supposed to be doing when I worked for a living. Right. It just was, I, I was good at doing it when I finally did it, but I was so like I didn't want to work. No, I you just indifferent. I'm like, whatever. What do I got? Yeah. Any way I could cut corners. Right. You know, on the construction job, I, I'll go to the Home Depot to go get the yeah, more yeah, nails, yeah, yeah. and then I'd be gone for like 45 minutes. I'm like fucking hanging out at Seven Eleven in the park a lot, <laughs> drinking a big gulp. Like this sucks. I go, yeah, the fucking line at Home Depot. There was one lane open the whole time. Yeah, there's the guy to go in the back and get the nails. Whatever. <laughs> Dude, there's always an excuse. I would always. do that constantly. It's like. Before I, I'd leave the shop to go to the job, uh, I'd love it if the foreman said something like, you know, oh, you got to stop off at Granger and pick up a ventilation fan because that's got to go in there. I'm like, oh, yeah, this is yeah, I'll go get it, an right? hour and a half. Yeah. I won't be working. Yeah, is it a great? Let's go in, stern on the radio. I got right. the fucking New York Post I'm reading, <laughs> yeah, sitting I'm... in the parking lot at Granger. And yeah, that's uh, it, it, the least I could do and not get fired. That yeah. was pretty much. And I failed at that a few times, the least I could do. And I got fired because right. I was doing the least I could do. So I, I, I knew that I wasn't cut out for doing real, real work. No way. I the same with me, like even um, on the construction site, like the measure stuff, <laughs> I didn't want to learn the tape measure. So I, go, I don't want, I don't, I'm not doing this the rest of my life. So if we're measuring sheetrock, I'll go, hey, it's, it's three feet, uh, uh, a quarter inch and two notches. <laughs> I didn't want to know what was two notches after a quarter. I wouldn't learn it. He goes, what? It's whatever. I go, I don't care. It's two notches, two notches. after a three feet and, and a quarter and, and th two notches. It's 230 and two more numbers. <laughs> two numbers. <laughs> it was his notches. I got. I don't give a fuck. This isn't going to be my career. <laughs> First of all, you know what the fuck I mean. So what does it matter? You know, two right. notches. Yeah, it's two so notches after. I, yeah. You know, what am I, a, an apprentice here? Yeah, because the guy be like, you got to get a real tool belt. I'm like, I don't fucking need I don't want a tool real tool belt. belt. I don't want fucking, I don't want a chalk thing. Remember the chalk thing? Chalk. Yeah, I don't want, want a line. Yeah, and I'll, I'll, I got a hammer and a screwdriver. Yeah, I, can, yeah. I can make it through the day with this shit. You didn't want to fucking uh, have the, the square pencil behind your ear? I didn't want that. I didn't want the fucking uh, level, the little <laughs> level in your fucking tool. I didn't want that shit because then yeah. I'm like, all right, I'm in this. 100% right. it if I bought all that shit. Now I'm invested in being this. Yeah. No, I, I tool belt, you bring that up because it was uh, one of the guys. I was the helper, you know, and you had the job, the guy that was the, the big shot on the job. And uh, he'd say, I remember him saying this in the morning. Set shit up. Have your egg sandwich or something. They'd yeah. be like, all right, suit up. Suit up. Oof. And he meant like put your, your fucking belt with your tools yeah. and your, oh. your nail apron and fuck it. Like you're going in, uh, into a battle. And it was just, uh, I, I, I'd hear that and go, uh. So I would just take my shitty nail apron Wrap that around me. I didn't have a belt. I dropped right. my hammer in the string to the nail apron. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That would hold it. Yeah. Would hold right. it. Yeah. I didn't give a shit. And he'd constantly be like, "Why don't you fucking get a hammer loop?" 
and a belt and stuff. It's like, cause yeah, I don't yeah, want to no. do this. No. I don't, if I was psyched for this, I'd have an ultimate fucking ultimate set of tools. Yeah. But uh, yeah, couldn't be uh, bothered. Could not fucking be bothered. <laughs> One time there was this guy that on the construction side, he fucked over my brother. It was my brother who bought his house or whatever. And he fucked him over and he left his car there. I don't know, for like two weeks straight, he just left it on the site, so, and he left it open. So every morning, I'd go in there after I'd eat like a fucking fried egg sandwich, <laughs> and I would shit in his car. I would sit in there and just fuck. I, I shit like seven different times in his car, in his front seat, on the steering wheel, in the back. Every morning, I'd go in there. I'd hang off over to, you know, because he had the, two, the, the sections. I'd hang over. I'd shit right in the back seat. <laughs> every morning, I'd go in there. And, and I guess he, did he know? When I he mean, came, he fucking flipped out, and my brother was like, I don't know, dude. because oh, he wouldn't come fire. back every day. No, no, he left it there for like two weeks. Oh, God, so two weeks worth of two shit. Two weeks worth of shit. And then when he came, I, I wasn't there. My brother, the guy was screaming. He's like, I don't fucking know, dude. You left your car here. You owe me money. I'm going to fucking sue you. Only the fucking concrete guys. They're uh, savages. <laughs> I, <know>. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, it, there, were, there were things that you would just do to fuck with... Um, People that either fucked you over or even as a joke, you know, a lot that's of, all you, that's all you had to do. You had. And if you were a funny guy or, you know, you would do, play jokes on the other trip. This one kid was like fucking a redhead. He couldn't be out in the sun for more like 10 minutes. So we sent him on the roof the first day. It was my brother-in-law. My sister just married him. He was like 20 years old, this kid. Oh, poor fuck. Fucking, yeah. And he go, we go, yeah, dude, start working on the roof, put the shingles on. He goes up there. It's fucking like 95 oh. in August, a sunny day. And then we took the ladder away and left him up there at one in the afternoon. To just cook. Just cook. We took the ladder. Go, on, dude. He was fucking, he couldn't jump off. He would have broken both legs. I'm like, nah, we'll, we'll, we'll put the ladder up when we feel it's like funny. it. It's funny. It's funny. It's just a joke. He'll get over it. <laughs> like in, skin cancer or some shit. The oh, best was there was this, this shitty house they were working on. My brother used to buy these shitty house. We had to fix them up and sell them. So there's a refrigerator in this old school refrigerator, right? So I open it up. I'm looking to see if there's anything. There's an empty ice cube tray. So I'm like, just looking around. I'm like, whatever. So I piss in the ice cube tray. Why? Why? No reason. Zero reason. I knew that was good. So I fill it up with fucking piss, and I just throw it back in the freezer. Okay, nothing. Don't think anything of it. Cut to two weeks later. We're all sitting around having lunch in this fucking house. It's like 90 degrees. And one of the guys, my friend Vinny, he's fucking big. He could kick my ass. He's drinking iced tea, and I, I hear the ice. I go, where'd you get the ice? He goes, oh, there was some ice in the freezer. Oh, no, dude. <laughs> and now you can't fucking No, I go, oh, really? I, he's like, yeah, man, there was ice here. Thank God, man. Yeah, there was a tray in there. I'm like, oh, cool. I never oh. said anything to him because he would have killed me. Yeah, that, he would kill you. You know, when I broke it to him, like 20 years later, he comes to see me at the stress factory. It's his, it's his 40th birthday. He brings like 20 people, his family, his kids. I broke it to him on stage. On stage. On stage, I told him. Did he do it? He would, they were holding him back. He tried to get to the stage to Holy fucking fight fuck. me. <laughs> he's, still he's like, you got to fucking stop telling that story. He, he's, he's still in stage. He's my plumber. He's my friend. You got to stop telling that. He I told his kids. I'm like, you drank my piss. Get over it. No one it. wants to hear that you drank. Uh... Yeah, I'm like, you're, you're our Kelly, you drank my piss. <laughs> uh, why? Why would I do that? Because it was funny. <laughs> it's just something. You'd get so bored on those sites that you have to do something. I knew one of the electricians would just, uh, this was really twisted. He, he uh, rigged up the 220 onto a metal plate where uh, um, if the rats that were in this building stepped on it, they would get electrocuted. Right. And then for lunch, we would just sit there throwing like food onto it. Eating the sandwich, waiting for a fucking rat to come out and electrocute itself. It's like, oh, okay. Like, what? how is that entertainment for anyone normal? <laughs> right. I know. Like, no normal person would sit there and go, no. yeah, okay, let's watch watch the rat fucking die uh, in the electric chair. <laughs> but, like I said, it, it wasn't my way of life. That's for fuck sure. The worst is if, if you went to lunch and you went to the strip club for beers oh, for lunch. Oh, all the time, yeah. You never get, there's no work going to be done in the You're afternoon. not coming back to fucking put your, to, to suit up again. No, there's no way. And climb ladders. Yeah, and, nothing's getting done in the afternoon. No. You know, if you got some shit to do, you're like, we can't go to the strip club for beers today. Because they'd have a buffet. They'd have a free buffet right. at the strip so, club yeah. from like noon to two. So like, come on, it's a fucking, we're going to eat lunch for free. Yeah, but you guys are going to go drink. I'm, you're gonna be, yeah. Who knows when you're going to be done. <laughs> yeah. when, when I was working in the shop, I was working for this place, True Mechanical on Jericho Turnpike out there in Long Island. 
and uh, for lunch we used to go across the street or uh, next door there was a bar called um, Doubles I think whatever the fuck it was and uh, it was right next to an OTB and they serve food and everything at the bar so we would go there grab something to eat and slam drinks down and bet a couple of races right <laughs> uh, the horses that was like the greatest thing to do but since it was in, in the shop where the boss is and everything we had to go back to work and we're working on machines that are bending sheet metal and cutting <laughs> big fucking brakes and shears and shit with a good buzz on <laughs> like looking at this thing going, oh yeah that'll rip your fucking hand right off right right off you know yeah you just didn't you know what are you gonna, the thought of just working every day the hours you were supposed to be there completely sober taking the lunch break for the amount of time you were supposed all that shit was just i couldn't do it i go in like if i have to do like morning radio early or something like that i go into 7-eleven at like 7 a.m and i see all those construction workers going oh, in there yeah. and getting a coffee and a bagel yep. with fucking butter on it i'm like holy shit <sighs> Just fucking bring back memories. You're it sitting does. in the truck outside. You think you know it could have been. Or... You know, and you know you got a long day ahead of you. Yeah, yeah. Fucking 7.30 to 5 out in the sun. Uh, oh, like, oh. Or in the cold, freezing fucking cold. Right, oh, the freezing cold. Brutal. Going through because there's no siding on. So you just got uh, the places framed out. And the wind is howling oh. through the fucking... And then I'm, I'm the sheet metal guy, and the sheet metal was always had to be 20 degrees colder than the air anyway. Right. And you try to hold that up. Like, all right, hold it up there while I Ugh. screw it in. And you're just getting frostbite. And then you couldn't wear gloves because you had to pick these little th drill screws, sheet metal screws, out of the stupid apron, put them in the uh, chuck of the Makita, and put it in the hanger. So you're holding this up with your bare hands, which are now turning white and blue, and yep. you can't feel your fingertips. Unless, of course, you reached in and one of those fucking little drill screws would go right up your fingernail. Oh. Dude, I, don't, I can't tell you how many times. I'm like, what are the odds of that happening 20 times in a day? Right, those little those screws, screws, right? Like this big? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Little fucking and sharp things because you yeah. drive them right through there. And I'm like, this is, I can't, I just can't do this. I can't fucking do this. <sighs> yeah. I, I left the site a couple of times because of an injury. Not even because I couldn't continue. But I just got so mad. I'm like, fuck this. Fuck this. There were these, you know, the hung ceilings. Uh, when they go to put them in, they just hang the wires down. Yeah. And they're really long at first. They have to laser it out and cut them to the right length, bend them, and then put the, the drop grid ceiling in, in. And then you put the drop yeah. pieces in. Well, we have to get the duct work up there. Usually we like it before the, the wires are even there. But since the wire was there, we could still get it up. So I go to push up one of these things. One of the, Things the wires hanging down hits me like this and goes right in my arm. Oh. I go to put because I'm trying to push the duct up and I go whoa wham right in my arm. I go fuck. I had a pull like like pull it out. I'm looking. I get a little gush and uh, I get some duct tape because you know that's in abundance. I put that on and the it wasn't my boss but it was like the next level up from me, supervisor, job, fucking whatever. And he starts laughing. He's like, ah, get bit you did it. He's like, bit me? <laughs> fuck him. <laughs> fuck this. Fuck. I just left. I did. did. And I've done that a couple of times. I did that a couple of times when after I cut myself, making a, a, a little, like a Z bracket or something, and I was drill screwing it into something, and the screw caught, and it just spins around and goes, whoop, because now it's a saw. Now you just have a handheld saw. <laughs> and I'm trying to Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And it grabbed into it. those little screws were tough to get in. Yeah. Yeah, they were like this big, right? That was yeah. for the... And they'd go, They once they went in, once it hit the head, it would spin the whole thing yeah, around. Yeah, it was very yeah. hard to strip those out, uh, even in sheet metal. And it was just, I, I'd had it. And, you know, also they didn't have, like, the... The Under Armour they have now where you could just wear, like, the shit underneath. Oh, yeah. And you're not even cold. Like, I've gone to football games in Green Bay in fucking December. Yeah, yo, Jesus, get that yeah. Under Armour shit. I'm fucking, I'm like, this is awesome. I'm not yeah, yeah. feel nothing. They didn't have that shit. I put four pairs of socks on. No, I wear my pajamas. Fucking like, from... three sweatshirts and a heavy <laughs> yeah. coat. Fucking two gloves. My fingers are fucking freezing. Layers. Put on some layers. And that was always a bad idea because your feet sweat. Yeah. I put like three pairs of socks on. My feet sweat. So, of course, gonna, it's going to get ice cold. Yeah. Yeah. And then, oh, God. Yeah. I just, <laughs> this is terrible. I couldn't fucking. I don't know. God bless you guys. No, that, I know. That fucking do that. I don't know how you fucking do it. Well, they, uh, 
I know you got shit to do. Yeah, do they bolt on you? <laughs> is Aaron still around? Is Aaron he... still here? <laughs> I think he bolted out on you. I, I think he might be outside smoking a cigar or something. Okay. I know you got you yeah, got some, some shit. Yeah. Whatever. But I mean, we'll we'll book you to have you on. I love. Yeah, I think I'm you. coming on in a couple of weeks. Oh, cool. Yeah, All yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, thanks for popping in, though, for m- reminding me of the hell that could have been. <laughs> that was well, one other quick time. one. So there was yeah. this crawl space. You know, the crawl spaces are oh, fucking, yeah. like this big. And my brother and this other worker had to put insulation in in the summertime, 90 degrees. Uh, yeah. And it's fucking, you know, you, there's all, you just have to crawl like this around. Yeah, there's nothing, yeah. no other way there's to nothing. do it. It's miserable. Yeah. Itch. So of course, <laughs> of course, before they go in there to start the day, I shit in a bag. And I stick it in there. I crawled all the way into the corner, <laughs> put it all the way over there, and then the ne- and they didn't they didn't smell it that day. Then the next day, I did it again. So <laughs> yeah. There was two bags in there, and they were fucking flipping out. It fucking stink. I can hear them. It fucking stinks in here. Did somebody shit? Oh motherfucker! <laughs> that is the worst. Thing. <laughs> in the tight little spaces, right. or you know, somebody. Uh, they- there was so much shit around that they couldn't see the bag. Yeah, you like know, it didn't stick it out. Is. Because there's all cut yeah, yeah. insulation laying around and garbage, <laughs> so they had no idea. But why would I do that? My own brother. <laughs> Seeing him uh, uh, hating that it smells like shit in there. And the asbestos, and he's probably getting cancer from. Oh, I'm sure. He's a mesothelioma. Oh, yeah, shit. without a doubt. It was that fucking yeah. you know, itchy shit that there's no way it was oh, fucking legal. wearing a mask. It's okay. Yeah, just like wearing one now is okay. <laughs> oh, my God. 